Sorry for the slow start to the review, but I wanted you to be able to see the uh, six foot by five and a half foot flatbed I just got done welding up using my Hobart Handler 140. Um, just so you know, this review is about using it when you're using flux score. I haven't used it on the gas side, so if you're looking for that, unfortunately, this review is not going to work for you. Um, the Hobart 140 is designed to use flux core along with gas. It'll use 24, 30, and 35 flux core, and that's what I use it for. Um, this flatbed, for example, is 3 16 inch thick by 1.5 inch steel square, along with 1 inch by 1 8 steel square. Uh, the Hobart works fine. I've had it for five years now. Never ever had any flaws with it. Um, it does have one or two quirks, and I'll mention those. Uh, the first of which is that when you get your Hobart, you have to put in the two pound reel that they give you, and there's an adjuster that's on the inside, and what Hobart tells you to adjust it and what I've found in reality are two different things. Um, it actually takes about two or three turns past what Hobart tells you in order to be able to get it to tighten up enough in order to feed properly. Um, the other thing is that when Hobart tells you to put the reel through, I don't know if they've changed it in their direction since I bought this one, but they tell you to have the tip to have the tip in when you run it through. What I've actually found is much easier is to take this off and unscrew the tip underneath, run the wire down through so you got about six inches out, and then thread the tip over the top, tighten it up, and then put this back on. Works much better. Um, the other thing about these, the grounding clip on this Hobart if you read the manual, it says that it opens to about an inch, inch and a inch and a half. Well, this is an inch, just barely fits. Like you literally have to press the pipe in. This is an inch and a half. There's no bloody way. It's never going to stay. The other nice thing about these Hobarts is on the inside they have an awesome chart that's on the inside of this I'll actually put it at the end of the video for people that are interested um, it reads out all the different flux core sides for the top two and then um, it reads I mean for the top one it reads out the flux core side and then it also reads out for if you're running um, C25 100% CO2, the Trimix, and 100% Argon. One thing I would note is that I don't think this machine was ever meant to run on Argon. I think they just added it as a selling point because there's only one type of wire that they recommend for running Argon on. It definitely is the most universally run according to the chart that's on it on solid CO2 which you can actually get a 20 ounce paintball gun CO2 canister adapter, which is what I intend to do for my next upgrade. And if I ever do it, I'll post a link up somewhere in this review. Um, the other thing that this reads off that I have found is kind of an issue is almost all of the settings that they tell you for the speed settings um, I don't know whether it's a quirk with my Hobart, but I've found that I have to adjust them all about five higher than what it says. So if it says 40, I find that I have to run it at 45. If it says 20, I find I have to run it at 25. Otherwise than that, all of the primary numerical settings for one, two, three, and four all seem to be exactly right. But f like I said, for some reason, the speed I have to set about five higher. Um, the other thing that I would like to note is Hobart claims that you can weld 20, uh, 24 gauge, um, 20 gauge, and 18 in their write-up, but when you finally get your Hobart and you read down through the chart, it only lists 18 gauge 
as being something that you can weld using flux core. So you want to be aware of that. Um, I found that 18 gauge doesn't actually weld. Um, you can tack it or you can weld it about half an inch or so and then it heats up and blows holes through. I've tried all kinds of angles, I've tried partial temp heating, everything else. Um, their claim about welding 18 gauge with flux core is a farce. It does not happen. I, like I said, I've owned it for five years and I've done all kinds of projects like this. I've welded up plows, I've done body work. Um, you can check out my Jeep video. You'll see a couple of pictures where I use this Hobart in order to fix a few panels. It doesn't happen. Um, at 16 gauge, you can hold a line, um, but you got to be quick about it and be really careful. Um, this thing's favorite thing to weld by far is definitely 8th inch thick steel. Anything 8th inch thick, it welds beautifully. You'll never ever see it flinch. Um, 3 16 it will weld, but a lot of times you got to come back across the weld. It claims it will weld quarter inch. I've done plow gear, like I said. It will do quarter inch, but you have to come back across the weld and fill it. It doesn't actually do it in one sweep, um, and you have to run the really thick 35 flux core which I usually run the 30 because it's more universal. Um, would I buy this? Yes. It's worth every single dollar I have ever put into it. Um, on the note that it does run on 110, it will blow a 15 amp circuit instantaneously the moment you try and weld 8th inch steel. It has to be on a 20 amp circuit and there has to be nothing else running on the circuit um, occasionally if there's even like a couple of lights or maybe a small radio running on the same circuit it'll trip the breaker it has to be a dedicated circuit it, it's not a joke it really does um, that's my review I hope you enjoy it if this was helpful for you please give me a thumbs up so that others can find this review feel free to subscribe to my channel to see whether there's stupid stuff I decide to weld up or to follow up and be able to see when I produce this um, flatbed for my wife's Ford Ranger. Have a good day.